In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. During this week of online church planning sessions, I was reminded of another important Palm Sunday in my life. One that happened while I was still a layperson at St. Paul's. I was on the altar guild, and we had worked all week long. We had cleaned silver, polished all the brass, and prepared everything for a grand and glorious Palm Sunday service. The church that morning was filled with palm branches, joyful voices, and people dressed in all shades of red. As the procession gathered in the narthex and the music began, a woman in the choir got sick and fainted. With everyone else occupied, I was the one that was called upon to help. So instead of heading into the church like I had planned, I helped this sweet, very sick person into the choir room. I called her family and told them I would sit with her until they arrived. As I sat there changing out the wet washcloths on her forehead, I could hear the distant sound of festival music in the distance. I was so upset. I'm a church person. The bigger the service, the better. And I will admit, it felt like my Palm Sunday, the one I had worked so hard for, had been ruined. I sat there feeling as sorry for myself as I did for the person I was taking care of. After a while, I settled down. My Palm Sunday? What kind of un-Jesus-y thinking is that? What I realized was that I was truly missing had nothing to do at all with Jesus. What I was missing was really all about me. I suddenly felt the shame of selfishness wash over me. And I realized I had learned a greater lesson there in the service of another person than I would ever have learned listening to beautiful music in a church service that morning. It was a clarion call to keep things in perspective. As I sat there, I realized that all the things about Palm Sunday that I love so much were really just things. Important things to be sure, things that I love, symbolic sacramental things in which I find deep spiritual meaning. But these same things I love so much would have been foreign to Jesus and his disciples as they made the journey to Jerusalem for the last time. Jesus was with his disciples riding on a donkey. He had no red robes, brass trumpets, or Tiffany drums to herald his arrival. He was probably tired and dusty and hungry as he arrived at the gates of Jerusalem. According to the Gospels, Jesus had been staying at Bethany before entering Jerusalem. And it was at the end of a long journey from Galilee riding a colt down the Mount of Olives. Luke's gospel even tells us that as Jesus approached Jerusalem, he looked at the city and wept over it, foretelling the suffering that was to come. He had no illusions as to what would happen to him when he got there. He knew. He was met by crowds cheering him on and waving palm branches, shouting, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Crowds whose shouts within a week would betray him and turn him over to be crucified. But Jesus knew what he was doing. He had chosen his timing. He knew that the city would be filled with festival goers as the people celebrated the Jewish festival of Passover. And he also knew that during these times, Pilate would enter the city with his magnificent military, keeping watch over the crowds of Jewish people so they did not get out of hand. So Jesus entered the city from the opposite side of the city, symbolizing an alternative vision for the people, a vision of the kingdom of God, a king of peace, not of war, a king of the people, not of the empire, a true God, not a Roman God like Caesar. This contrast between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Caesar is central to the story of Jesus and early Christianity. These two processions also exist in our world today. And perhaps the lessons we learn from this stark Palm Sunday will help us choose which procession we want to be in. 
Today, we are absent the things that make us feel good about Palm Sunday. There is no Huey the donkey to lead us in our outdoor procession. There's no gathering of the faithful in our sacred space. No hugs at the peace. No beautiful music or flowers. No Miss Betty in her red hat. And no beautiful red vestments or church bread because there is no Eucharist. But it is still Palm Sunday that we celebrate, even with our homemade palms, morning prayer, and laptop church. And maybe, just maybe, it is the best Palm Sunday that we will ever know, a Palm Sunday where we have come to terms with our limits and we know what really matters and what does not. A Palm Sunday without all the trappings, a Palm Sunday where we are faced with a somber reality of how things are and what our job is as followers of this Jesus. It is the still the day we remember Jesus and his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, marking the beginning of Holy Week. And it is still the day we begin our journey with Jesus through the last week of his life. This beautiful Palm Sunday morning is one that we will always remember. We will not remember it for its beautiful liturgy, it's inspiring music, or it's gathering of friends. But we will remember it as the years changed. The year that we were used to, the year that what we were used to was no more. The year that made us reset our values, our hopes, and our dreams, and our prayers. It is the year when we quit being an onlooker of our faith, and we became a true participant in this Christian journey when we learn to take up our own cross as Christians and learn quickly and sometimes poorly to be the church. The time when our longing for a more familiar time was transformed into action and efforts to help usher in the kingdom of God. We will remember this Palm Sunday for the lessons we have learned living through this frightening time. We may not have our normal playbook to follow, but our walk with Jesus is the same, only stronger. We are now forced into a place where we can see what really matters. Life, hope, friends, family, food, and even toilet paper. Our love and care for one another in our parish family is the same, if not better. We seem to be more concerned about making check-ins, phone calls, and grocery runs for those who don't need to take any risks, making sure ch school children are fed and those with food insecurity have fed. Our commitment to our faith is even stronger. We are grateful for grainy videos of our friends and garbled sounding prayers. We are grateful for connection with God, with our faith, and with each other. We seem to be more appreciative of the little things. So the fear and uncertainty that we are living with on this Palm Sunday may help us to understand the mindset of Jesus as he approached the walls of the city. This is the closest we have ever come as a church to walking the way of the cross as Jesus probably did. Without trappings and fanfare, alone, scared, vulnerable, and totally dependent upon God. But as Jesus knew as he entered Jerusalem, God was with him, and God is with us this day and every day. As Ann Weems says, the only road to Easter morning is through the unrelenting shadows of that Good Friday. Only then will the alleluia's be sung. Only then will the dancing begin. That is our song and our promise. Amen.